Okay, so we're gonna make the flower today. So let's turn our, on our line shading and we won't be animating the flower today. We will cover that in another tutorial. So we'll turn down our width and height 10 minutes to five and we need to make this editable so we can click C. And now the aim here is just to drag this into a nice position. So we start fleshing out a leaf shape. So leaves have a pretty basic shape and most of the detail we're going to get is going to be from effectors and texturing. So don't worry too much about this step, but you need to work out which type of petal you want. It's also a really good idea to keep the geometry as clean as possible because we're going to be deforming this a lot. So if we have, for example, unequal quad topology, we're going to run into a lot of trouble. So I'll make this a bit skinnier and I want to make the base quite skinny too because as it splays out it needs to get larger and larger and if it's too large at the base it won't meet properly. So I think that'll just about do it. So let's just check that in a subdivision surface and check everything subdividing nicely. So that looks good. So I'm going to drag it out again. We don't need it yet. And now we're going to grab a couple of bend deformers. So our first bend deformer is going to be horizontal and this is just to bring the edge up a little bit and stop it being completely flat. So I want this to be about equal on both edges. So I'll just check this in my other views and play with our strength. And again, you can trial and error a lot with this. So let's grab another bend and this is going to be the main bend we use. So it's important we make sure we align it the correct way before we start playing with the strength and scale it down a little bit. And now let's see how that's looking. So it's aligned the right way and it's folding over nicely. The fold is very jagged, but that's just because our geometry is low. Once we subdivide this and add more geometry, it's going to look a lot smoother. So different pedals are going to have different levels of bend. So we're going to leave it at this position for now. And I'm going to rename everything so that later it's super easy to work out what's going on. And now it's time to start playing with the cloner. So let's go to radial mode. And we want to turn off reset coordinates. And just a little stumbling block here. It's sort of easy to move the plane, but forget about the position of the bend deformers, which is then going to mess up the look of the pedal. So the best way to do this is grab a null. Because as you can see right now, it's we're not getting the look we want. So if we put everything into a null and then put it inside the cloner, I think that should work a lot better. And we'll be able to align this up nicely. So we want the pedals to make a sort of edge like this. And at this point, everything is highly subjective. So you could easily shrink down the width of each pedal and add a lot more pedals in or increase the radius of the center. And this can kind of go on forever. But with our next cloner, we're going to turn this linear. And again, this is subjective, but maybe I'll start with nine. And I want the Y increase to be quite small, but we do want to change the scale because the inner leaves of a pedal are typically smaller because they um, haven't unfurled as much. So I think we'll stick with 95. And then we want to look at a rotation value so i might go with this classic number 137.5 but again it's not really a hard and fast rule and then we can play with our main so as you can see if we play with the main while it's in the cloner it's not going to work very well and there are some tricky ways around this but i'm just going to collapse the linear cloner down and we can simply go into each main and play with the strength so this isn't a great solution if we're looking to animate, but if we're trying to get the perfect look, I think it's a fairly good solution, a fairly good fix. And another reason we want to open up that linear cloner is that we get a lot of control over everything. Here, I have, I won't do it because I want to make this fast, but it'll be possible to give the outer cloner more petals. Okay, so that's the example we've done, but obviously experiment with the number of petals, the shape, the size, the angle. So now I'm going to drop in the flower that I've already played with and got looking how I want to. So feel free to experiment with this stage a lot to get everything looking nice. So this is my one and just a couple more notes before we keep going. This is looking a bit more organic and one of the big reasons for that is because of this displacer. So we want to grab one displacer and put a really small height on it and add noise and it just adds a little bit more detail. And this displacer is affecting all the cloners. We also have a cloth surface with a small thickness and the thickness is really important because we're going to be using some subsurface scattering. If you have no thickness then the subsurface scattering won't be able to work correctly and it's going to be a real pain. So next up, uh, 
touch I really like is grabbing a sphere and putting this in a cloner and this is going to serve as our little water drops so we'll switch to object mode and drag in the cloth surface and then we have all these spheres sticking to the flower which is great and we also want to add in a bit of variation so we add the random to the cloner and let's switch to multi instance to speed it up and we'll turn off position and for our scale we're just going to play with a small amount because we don't want everything to look exactly the same and I normally use uniform scale but in this case I think I'm going to switch it up a little bit I can imagine the water wanting to run down the flower so maybe we can make the variation on the Y a little bit bigger but again this is just taste we can of course scale the sphere directly as well and I'm just going to up the count it looks like a lot now but when we start rendering it you can see the the drops are just transparent water so it's easy to miss them so i need to switch over to redshift now and i'm just going to change the width height to 2000 2000 for an instagram post and now let's create a standard material okay so let's start out with a max on noise and let's grab a ramp and we'll put this into the input and we'll drag this into the base color for now later on i'm also going to put this into the sss but there's no need to do that yet because it's going to slow everything down so we'll just play with the base first and then we'll sort the sss later so let's grab another max on noise and plug it into the roughness and we'll grab one more and this is going to be for the bump so i like to do this setup at the start and then after this we can solo all of the nodes and dial in each look and i'll endeavor to do this pretty fast today but just give you guys an idea of how i go about this so we can click this little s which means Means that's the only thing we're going to see on the material and I'm just using the preview not the redshift view because this is just for the noise so it's a really quick way to see the scale so I think I went with gaseous for this one uh, so we can turn our overall scale down and also because of it's a flower and I'm trying to think about the sort of veins and texturing inside I want to scale this up on the Y so we get a bit more directionality so I think that's looking good to me. So we'll unsolo that and then let's look at this ramp. So a ramp is really good because we can take the data from the Maxon Noise and easily add color. And please take longer to pick your preferred colors, but I'm just gonna run through quickly. And now we can play with the scale of the noise. And I'm going to up it on Y again so that we get this kind of directionality that we've been talking about today. And then we can use the ramp to potentially really dial it in and add more contrast. And I think for most situations, we're going to want a pretty small difference. So even here, I think the purple might be a little bit too much, but we can have a first look at this. So now in subsurface, uh, let's put this up to 0 0.7. So we don't want it completely subsurface. We want a little bit of that base color leaking through still. And for now, let's just put in a random color, but later we're going to plug our ramp in when we're ready for the final render. And we're going to set up our background as well. So a good background is really important to get a nice gradient. So let's set up our camera as well and we'll increase that focal length. I think the larger focal length looks really good for the flower. And let's just turn this on its side a little bit to add a bit more interest and give us a more interesting composition. This is also a good way to display the petals in my opinion. And now let's grab a couple of area lights. So we'll scale this down. So let's turn this around. Uh, so this can be like a top down light. So I'll make it a lot smaller, something like this and drag it up and make sure we have our camera selected just so we can see what we're working with. So right now this is looking horrendous and it's because we're missing some lights and materials. But I'm gonna turn this intensity down because the flower's obviously completely blown out. And half again. And now I want to create another material. Okay, so now let's just give this a blue color that's similar to the flower and we can put this on our plane. And I'm really enjoying this kind of single color setup that we're doing. But the reason the plane still looks trash is because we don't have an area light on it. So we need to set up a light that illuminates the base or the plane rather. Okay, so in this instance, if we have the plane straight on, it's going to be hard to get the gradient I'm looking for. And it's going to come out much better if we have a light shining down from the top. The reason I want to do it from the top is that if we have the light bleeding down on the background from the top rather than the bottom, it's going to tie in with the lighting that we have on the flower. It's going to make sense. If we have a completely different attitude to the lighting on the back, I think it looks sort of weird. So we're going to bring this uh, main lighter on the flower back a little bit because I think it's a little bit much. 
So at this point, I'm just going to speed through these last couple of minutes because this is finishing touches, sort of. So to get a final render, you need to play around a lot with all of the settings. And I think it's kind of pointless to show you guys too much, but you just need to go back and forth between materials, lighting, composition, and get something that works for you. So for example here, I want to make the bump a little bit smaller and also give it that directionality so it ties in with the noise texturing that we've done so far. And I also need to make sure to turn off the solo so we can see the final. And we might tilt this main light so it's hitting the flower a little bit more head on. And now we need to grab another standard because we haven't fixed our water yet. So let's drag that onto the sphere. And then we're just going to go into our transmission and turn it up to one. And because these droplets are so small, I wouldn't worry too much about trying to dial this in. I think it'll probably give us everything that we need. So we'll need to do a final render at this point to see what everything's looking like because the SS can come out looking a lot different, but it's still too light for sure. I think we're starting to get there though. For the final, I also need to make sure that we plug our Max on Noise color ramp into our SSS color, which I think will add another 5%. And we can always look at lightening up the background a little bit more because right now the light blue isn't working perfectly with the flower but that's kind of how i went through this project and i hope you guys got something out of it so i've been working on animating something like this there's a test of it out on instagram if you're interested but i'm going to be putting some more time into making this look better so when i've found a good solution for animating flowers i'll let you guys know and i'll see you guys in the next one cheers